Hey YouTube and welcome back to another rousing episode of Tia talking while doing things. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys while I'm doing this makeup look. I have a it's pretty important Zoom call that I'm actually already running late to that I am going to head off to. And while I do this look, I wanted to talk to you guys about a question that I get uh, a bit too often and what I think about it. Uh, I could not answer, I could have just left it there, but since I think that my um, insight is useful to be out there, I think that it could be a productive conversation to have. I thought, why not make a video about it? The big question, where is Enrico? If you guys are interested in this conversation and also how I achieved this makeup look, be sure to keep on watching. So into the topic of the video. Where's Enrico? Where's Enrico? You guys are always asking me, where is Enrico? And while I know that this question comes from, I think, a good place, a place of curiosity, um, yeah, a place of curiosity. I'm gonna tell you guys a bit about this question, what feelings it evokes from the influencer side. I had first showed Enrico in my videos years ago. I had maybe a thousand followers and I think the first video we did together was the boyfriend tag. And we did it because, you know, it was, it was just the thing everybody was doing, it was fun. It was when YouTube was still a game and you were still making content just just cuz. I didn't think anybody was actually going to see that uh, video on a large scale and I didn't really think about what that actually meant. The reaction when it did start to go public was a lot of positive, um, a lot of people were really nice to me and Enrico and really supportive, supportive, but there was also quite a bit of negative and a lot of like negative sentiments, negative backlash that I didn't expect to really be getting, especially in 2020. Of course, views were great, but is my relationship for views? Um, for some people it is that way, for me it wasn't. I made a decision that I didn't want my relationship to be a commodity or something that my YouTube success was based on. And the first time that I really understood the scope of what I had done by putting us both out there like that was when people started to recognize us in public. Now, when you when this doesn't happen to you, it probably sounds like something cool, like, oh my gosh, people recognize you. And for sure, every influencer remembers uh, the period when they started going a bit viral and people started noticing them, or okay, maybe not every influencer, but that happened to, that happened to happen to me. And there was a point where me and Enrico were both outside and people would come up and say hi. And you know, it was cute, but at the same time, it was very eye-opening for me. Because you know, while already for me, it was unexpected. I didn't know that that's what being an influencer entailed. Don't ask me why I didn't get it back then, but I never put it into my head that it would get to a point where people would be recognizing me on the street. Um, and that was already something for me who consciously and consciously gave my consent to, you know, put myself out there, be in videos, be uh, a subject. But Enrico, I felt pretty bad about it because he didn't, he was making the videos for me, of course, but he didn't get it either. And it also wasn't his 100% choice to be put out there. I put him out there. Um, he didn't decide that he wanted to be a YouTuber. He was just, you know, sitting in his girlfriend's video. And given that I know my boyfriend and I know his personality, that was, he, he's very shy. And to put somebody out, of, out there like that without it being their 100% choice, and it doesn't even go with their personality, it starts to become less of a positive thing and more of a negative thing. So I had to grapple with that and come to terms with that and like decide, you know, how much I wanted to put our relationship out there, given that one, the whole YouTuber influencer thing was not Enrico's choice or desire. And two, it was just really weird having all these extra people in our relationship making comments, giving advice, giving pareri and what they thought it was not ideal. I, I decided like little by little to show less and less of him because I wanted you guys to come to Tia Taylor for me and my content and not for my relationship and whatever ideas about my relationship that you were building in my head because I think that's what it is. People live a bit vicariously through these um, influencer relationships 
and aside from the you know growing affectionate and becoming uh like friends with the influencer they also become invested in the relationship they become a part of the relationship i feel that's what i've come to terms with if i think about like me and other influencers and their relationships influencers that i follow as a follower you know anyways all of this to say i made a conscious decision to not want my relationship to be part of my you know, product offering on my YouTube channel because I felt like it just added too much stress to my personal life and to the relationship, unnecessary stress because why? And so that comes, that brings me back to the question of where's Enrico, where's Enrico? You guys, why is it assumed that if you don't see Enrico for five seconds, he that we broke up or he's not here anymore like what do you guys think happened we've literally been together for six going on seven years i made a video like three weeks ago about how i bought my house without my boyfriend my keyword there being i have a boyfriend so why is it automatically assumed that we broke up i mean why can't the assumption just be that enrico has a life enrico has a job enrico has no obligation to show his face on this channel and i don't really want him to because i thought you guys were here for me um why can't it just be that i don't know i guess i could respond to all of these comments that i get every time and just be like working he's here but he's working but it's like why do i even need to explain that every time it, this is the thing it's this constant battle with the follower feeling super entitled to the influencer to parts of the influencer and parts of their life and i totally get it because i am a follower too to some people and the influencer just saying no that's not Part of what I'm offering you, drawing boundaries. Boundaries is a big one. So I applied my eyeliner off camera. I'm not even super confident on how I feel about it, honestly. I don't know if it's the best eyeliner job I've ever done, but I have like nine minutes before the meeting starts. So Back to what I was saying, boundaries. Let's have a 10 minute chat on boundaries. Uh, as many of you guys know, because I keep on saying it and I keep on saying it because I want it to be super normalized, I go to therapy now. And uh, I need that to not be a taboo. I need as many people to start that, that can to start going to therapy as possible because this time, this year has been so trying on everybody. You cannot say, that you haven't been affected by these unprecedented times in which we're living in. And I think everybody needs a therapist. I think everybody needs a therapist in general, but especially right now. And so I will say as many times as possible uh, that I need, I have a therapist. I go to therapy and make it normal so that other people aren't afraid to seek help. Luckily in 2020, there are a lot of options. Uh, it's not great because it's still a cost that not everybody can afford but there are more affordable online remote options that you guys should definitely check out in some of my very first sessions my therapist identified to me the fact that i have really poor boundaries in general in my life and i would have never thought that i would be the type of person to not have good boundaries i always felt that I was a person that was very much in control of everything. I like to be very much in control of everything. But she very aptly pointed out to me that between my real job, my nine to five job we'll say, and my online job, there was no boundaries. There's a lot of overlap there and that's not good. It's, it's not. Um, she was saying that between like friends and acquaintances, I didn't have a clear line between who was a friend or who was an acquaintance. I was treating everybody like they were my best friend. And that was simply because I feel like attention and time, I do believe that time is money and you invest your time in people. And I want it to be known that I think that everybody is important enough to have a piece of my time. And that has always been my philosophy. Hang on, let me put on these lashes. The makeup that comes out when I do these get ready with me's are always terrible. 
but we've already started, we're already here, so we're gonna finish. So for me, it's just really important to give people attention and, and show that everybody is worth my attention. Even, even somebody that I've never met that just subscribes to my channel, they are worth my attention because if they weren't subscribed to my channel, I wouldn't be who I am today. And that's just always been my philosophy in life. That's always been how I approached things in my relationships. Uh, whether you were an acquaintance, a follower, a person that I've never even met in real life before, you are all going to get treated with my utmost uh, attention and respect. Now, this was easy enough when, you know, I only had a couple thousand followers and I only had a few friends. Um, but as I grew and I never adjusted this uh, approach, it became very unsustainable. I mean, we're at the point where I literally get, I interact with hundreds of people per day um, between all of the different social medias and my work. Uh, on WhatsApp, I get written at least 50 messages a day uh, from people, from work. And there was a really long time, oops, here we go again with this, where I was trying to keep up with all of that and treat everybody like my best friend and answer everybody and be involved with everything. And it's just not humanly possible. It was to the point where I wasn't sleeping well because the first thing I would do in the morning and the first thing that I would do at night is go on Twitter and check what is happening on Twitter so I can be informed and be able to keep other people informed and keep my finger on the pulse of everything and be in everything and give my 100% to everything. But when you're doing a million things the way I am, there's no way to give yourself 120% effort and attention all of the time. That is the... Uh, that is the recipe for burnout. And you guys know, if you guys follow me a lot, you know that I, I burn out regularly and I try to um, make it seem like this normal thing and say, oh, well, at least there's Ferragosto, so now we can recharge. Like, that's not normal if you're constantly burning out. So yeah, one of the very first, uh, we'll say, activities that my therapist had me do was make a list of everything that I do in a day, all of my interactions, and I didn't, yeah, she wanted me to do it for two weeks. I did it for one day and it was enough. Make a list of all of your interactions and analyze them. See which ones give, your, give you energy and which ones take your energy. And it was just like a budget, but of feelings. So that was nice. And I did it and I made some, I, I don't know if you would call them difficult decisions. I mean, some people had that I think thought they were my probably good friends or friends had to get put back on acquaintance list and acquaintance list means I might respond, I might not because I'm very busy and you're just gonna have to understand that. I'm sorry, there's no way around it. Um, it wasn't easy, but I'm feeling a lot better. And all of this was to say, I think the case of, you know, showing Enrico and, um, and that whole relationship online dynamic was another issue of boundaries. And I, I'm, I'm saying the boundary right now, like Enrico is not a part of my channel. And I mean, you guys can still ask. It's a free uh, internet, a free country. I can't stop you guys from asking me, but I just want to know, want you guys to know, like, you know, the background of what I'm thinking and what other influencers that you might be doing the same things to are thinking as well. You might feel entitled, but you're actually not. The influencer chooses what they want to put out there. And if they don't feel like putting that information and that part of their life out there to you, then it's just not, it's not for you. It's just not there for you. I, I guess it goes without saying that if you were subscribed to this channel just to see me and Enrico's relationship, you should probably unsubscribe because that's not what this channel is about. That's not what this channel is going to be. And um, unless I say otherwise, me and Enrico are together and he's doing fine. Um, <laughs> Enrico is in the other room right now, working remotely, doing uh, Zoom calls as well. We are great, greater than ever. That's pretty much <laughs> my TED talk. Uh, the meeting starts in one minute and I still need to do some stuff with my face. I would love to know what you guys think. And I mean, boundaries go for everything, not just relationships and, you know, relationships with your significant other and relationships with your followers, but also work. Let me know in the comments section if you're one of those people who recently started smart working and now the boss thinks that they can reach you at whatever time of night or whatever time of day and you keep responding. 
I mean, this wasn't my personal issue, uh, luckily, but I know a lot of people have this issue and have told me about this issue when I've asked about, you know, what's new with smart working, what are some issues you've been facing? And you know, that is an issue of boundaries. You let your boss uh, understand you to be 100% uh, disponibile all the time around the clock and now they're just they're just go working off of the boundaries that you set them. I bet you if you stopped responding at 9 p.m. they would stop writing you at 9 p.m. Sure, it's not that simple and we're all afraid of getting fired, especially now, but I've always had it in my mind that if you're a valuable worker, if you've shown your value, if you've shown, you know, that what you're worth to your boss, you're not going to get fired for responding within office hours. Um, but I understand better than anybody, trust me, that this whole boundary setting thing is really hard. Pretty much finished my makeup. Uh, I just need to put on some lip gloss and some mascara and I'm gonna be good. Love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. I believe that in the future we are going to be seeing full studies and college courses on the psychology of the internet, the influencer, the follower, the online personality. All of these things are gonna come out because there are so many inner workings of psychology at play. Uh, I want to know what you guys think about this issue. So that's going to be it for it now, you guys. I'm going to head off to my Zoom call in the rest of my day. And as usual, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in my next one. Mm.